Hi folks, welcome to IMB Magazine. My name is Clive Forth from MTB Skills and you're joining us for the Skills and Technique feature. Each issue we're going to be looking at different techniques and the core skills uh, to ride a mountain bike. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Some of the key and consistent terminologies you're going to read. Let's do with vision, our speed control, our body position and footwork. Vision isn't the simple subject of just looking at the trail ahead. We focus on various sections of the trail and our speed depends exactly where we need to look. Slower speeds, we can look down at the trail more and use the head a little bit more, but at higher speeds we need to maintain the head staying upright and looking further ahead up the trail. Vision tells us everything we need to know about speed control. This is imperative when we're descending, safe braking, maintaining a decent speed and trying to carry a rhythm through the trail. We go through various processes of decelerating into sections of trail, be it corners or drops. And then there may be the need due to the gradients and fall line to do an element of control braking within features as well. All of these things you'll, you will find a combined body position. Here in the descent shot, you can see the body is working, the hips are twisting. Part of the body work there is the head's kept up and the footwork comes into play. Climbing, standing, accelerating, dropping into a bit of trail. It may look like the body's moving a lot over the top of the bike, but in actual fact, it's the bike moving below the body. And tying it all together is the footwork. So more often than not, we end up out of foot down in corners to transfer our body weight through the bike into the trail. We roll the foot on the pedal, twisting the foot towards the crank arm. And it's preferable, although tricky, for those of you who've been riding for years, to lead with your outer foot into corners. That's to get the hips twisting in. Climbing, footwork comes into play. We need to get our pedal timing and crank position lined up to clear obstacles to avoid those pedal smashes. We're looking at speed control and specifically gears. Shifting gears and cadence. So your trails are gonna be composed of up, uppy sections, flatty sections, downy sections, and learning to pace rides and use a bit of effort and use a bit of torque and a bigger labored gear to clean Technical features like these little rocky passages is a key thing, but then working out where you can get a bit of recovery is uh, equally important because you've got this whole process of putting out big effort and having to recover. If you've got your setup lined up right and your timing, you're shifting right, you should be able to sneak a gear change in when your cranks are in the vertical position, i.e. when you're not really able to put that much power through them and the chain will claw its way up the cassette. But it's worth doing what we're doing here and just taking time to have the bike in a stand and just go up and down through the gears and just understand better how that mechanism works and that should help you uh, have the confidence to to shift under load uh, but more importantly be considering your timing of when you do that we're going to be looking at some braking technique all right so as with always the golden rule of trail riding is get looking up the trail and read things in plenty of time braking here we want to have our finger our first finger perched on the end of the lever for maximum control we're being light and delicate on it. So the trick is modulating the brakes. We're gonna be sometimes more reliant on the back brake and doing a bit of dragging with the back to uh, not have the front washing out on us in the turns. We want to avoid consistently dragging them because it's gonna build up temperature. It really is something you learn through practice, uh, techniques that require feeling. You've gotta go out there and hit up as many different types of terrain as you can. Wet rocks, slidey rocks, roots like we've got here. Again, you're gonna to wanna to skip away from me off the brakes to get the grip and the bike will really hook up and turn. Decelerate on the way in, control on the way through, and if you really need some grip for it to hook up and turn, get off the brakes. And dropping down over stuff, it's just a continued process of modulating between the two. We're looking at avoiding the stall. Opening shot, obvious maneuver to avoid stalling out on them roots is a sweet little manual. There are lots of different techniques you can use. Typically it is the manual, we, as long as we can get the front centre over the bike, then generally the back will uh, follow along behind us. However, in situations like this where the ground's pan flat, this is where riders are losing speed, particularly in World Cup downhills, you'll see and that's where they can pick back time. Classic bit in our local trail, first run throughs, heavy, laboured, I'm leaning into the bars and you can see the bike stall out. Second run through here, pace pretty much the same on the way in, exit speed totally different by doing a little bit of unweight in the front and rear, that third and final run, easy just to eliminate all. Micro stalls, little square edges holding you up and these bigger obvious stalls and sloping bits of rock and root and so on. As best we can do to thread through there, find a sweet line, 
the more likely we are to carry decent speed. Here we're going to be looking at a bit of a mini series of what I consider the core skills and it all starts with the wheelie. The wheelie links you sweetly into learning manuals and bunny hops. All these skills are about pivoting over the rear axle. In order to perform good consistent manuals you've got to get that front wheel right up in the air and be comfortable in that neutral balance point. And the height of that limits the height in which your bunny hops. Whoa, so here we go folks, welcome to another issue of IMB. So we're looking at the manual. Fantastic useful skill, comes into play out on the trail, comes into play when we're just having a bit of play time. Bunny hops come in on the trail in all sorts of places, whether we're using a little donk to cheat that lift or whether we're just pulling hops off the flat for practice, it really is a skill that's worth sessioning. What to some would look like three pathetically small drops, to others could be quite significant. You really want to start small with everything, start slow and build up from there. So finding drops of this scale are pretty handy. Uh, so there's loads of different styles of corners out there. I brought a couple of volunteers along with me today just so we can look at different people's abilities on the bike, their different frame sizes and we have both a lady and a guy with us so we can see how you might have to change your technique according to your physique, your physiology but you're also going to have to change your technique according to the types of corners that you're riding. So uh, stay tuned, enjoy! So here we are for another edition of the IMB Technique feature, and it's the biggie. It's the one that a lot of people want to master. We're looking at jumps. So we're now in Drumland Rig. Uh, we're going to introduce Camber. So if you've read the feature, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you've not read the text, don't be lazy just by watching the video, get in amongst it and read the text as well. So camber's everywhere in our world. We'll get what we call positive camber, the shapes that are working with us, the berm type shapes, and we'll get what we call negative camber. So the stuff that is off camber working against us. Uh, we're gonna be using all of our technique and this is all about progressing the core technique from the previous features. The fundamental things of vision, body position, footwork, the speed control through the section. We're going to have to hone those skills, really sharpen them up as we get exposed to more extreme and severe terrain. When I mean extreme and severe, we're talking narrower, steeper, both up and down, as well as chunkier, so a gnarlier trail surface, a rougher trail surface. Welcome folks to another edition of our skills and technique feature. This time around, as much as we're moving into winter, we're not particularly going to focus on winter skills. We're going to look at bringing all them skills together and using them to link features. So it's all about linking pieces in the trail and obviously we're looking at the more technical side of things, the more technical terrain and linking stuff, bringing all the skills together that we've learned, wheelers, manuals, hops, pressure, obviously using your core techniques, your vision and so on. Um, really will help you find a little bit more flow on the trail. So you join us again for another uh, instalment of our skills and technique. And we're looking at climbing. Now, inevitably, a lot of people end up doing the easy route up, forest roads and easier tracks and trails. But there is another way, and there are certainly sections out there, both in more natural terrain and the bike parks, that you'll find a bit more challenging. And we're looking at technical climbing. So let's go and see what we can find here at our home at Maybe Forest. 